Thanks for staying with us. The Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC, condemned the bombing of the Action People's Party, APP Secretariat in River State, labeling it a threat to democracy and political stability in Nigeria. IPAC urged President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to take decisive action against political violence and terrorism and called for a thorough investigation to identify and prosecute those responsible for the attack. The council criticized the perpetrators as desperate politicians undermining democratic values and warned against viewing politics as a do-or-die affair. IPAC appealed to all political parties and Nigerians to condemn the violence, promote peace, and support efforts to combat political extremism. To discuss this with us this, this morning is Bedford Berefa, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Bedford. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. First of all, is it not too premature to mm -hmm. label these a political, uh, an act of political violence? Because I'm not sure they have caught any culprit and they're still calling for investigation. Is it not too premature to call it political violence? Well, well you know that um, the River State in recent history has been characterized with uh, setting a political uh, turmoil. Uh, so every activity is usually categorized as political uh, interference. Even the protest, you know, uh, uh, where I were scared that politi uh, political allies be they attack the process of the process. You know, so everything in River State currently now is attributed to politics due to the fragile state of uh, the political inconsistencies as regards to uh, structure and uh, and uh, political loyalties. I, you, you see uh, the events of things in River State it suggests to you uh, uh, that you know everybody wants to be on top gear, yeah, on top of their game you know, in the polity. So everything is uh, attributed to that. But for me, I think uh, is um, uh, the government of today needs to sit up and you know do everything necessary to you know bring the corporates to book because it's very very too discriminatory to have attributed to it to politics. But as it were, due to the recent development in River State, it is not far fetched from the truth. However, the system needs to rejig and to really, really pick up uh, every uh, uh, tenant of security, particularly political security and, and, and political parties that will participate in those elections, in the, in the local government election. It is very, very important that, that uh, the, the, the security of the environment must be you know, up top, on top there. Yeah. Do you think they're making any headway with the investigation? Because now, if we're going to establish that it's a bit premature, for us to um, know what exactly is, is happening or what exactly has happened or who has done this, um, there needs to be thorough investigation. So do you think they're making headway with this? Uh, well, of course, um, the government of the day, um, Governor Sim Kupara, you know, is a man of peace. Uh, we, we all know we are, we are can attest to that fact, but... You know, of course, you know, the, the issue just happened. And I, I believe, I'm very, very sure, uh, you know, that um, um, the security agencies are on, are on top of it, you know, and people just want to make a more heal out of it. This can happen anywhere in the country. The government of the day is working assiduously to ensure uh, that uh, the culprits are brought to This is not the first time in River State something of such is happening. Even um, security agencies, you know, policemen that... That's where uh, that were killed, as it were. You know, uh, as time goes on, they unravel the, the mystery and bounty is usually put on you know those that will you know fish out the culprit. And, and so, so in reverse, it, it is a testament that every evil deed, those that are perpetrators of it, are usually brought to and this one cannot be any different. I said, you know, the government of the day is being you know anchored on you know peace and sustainability. In, in, in River So without, on top of the matter, the security agent, I ask them to you know, they are very positive best. You know, the detonator, the detonator must be uh, from taking to lab and look at fingerprints and all of that. They have to be sure that um, this obvious incident is a which are brought to them. My concern is that there was a supposed bomb attack a long time ago, a few months ago, and then River State, uh, State uh, government said that someone was caught or was 
uh, was seen in a hospital with, uh, with burns, and they said that was the culprit that wanted to detonate a bomb uh, in River State uh, because of political issues. Till now, we've not heard definitely uh, any evidence that that is the guy who wanted to detonate a bomb and how it is linked to the politics of River State. Now another one has come, and APP is accusing, uh, pointing accusing fingers at other political parties, maybe not necessarily only the PDP or APC, but uh, other political actors, and saying that these are the ones that caused the bombing of their secretariat, which maybe after investigation may not be true. So is it safe for us to be throwing accusations carelessly like this at people and then not face any consequences? So uh, it's very, very sad that um, that uh, incident that is one out of many incidents. Of course, you know, when an issue has happened, you know, um, suspects are presented, suspects are identified, and until that suspect is proven beyond reasonable doubt in a competent um, process uh, to ascertain that he is the person or such person is the culprit, you know, you cannot, it's not safe to now say that that is the culprit. So, of course, if an uh, issue of, like that has happened, you know, the investigation is not one day, it's not one month. That investigation, you know, it will take years to unravel, as it were. Uh, so, uh, I believe uh, it is not necessarily safe to say, but this is a political party. Uh, secretary that has been bombed, so of course it should be linked. It could be internal, it, it could be internal uh, uh, party, internal uh, crisis, it could be external forces. But of course, you know, investigation must must be on top gear, you know, to unravel it. But it's not necessarily investigation. Until investigations are concluded, you cannot now say that is the culprit because somebody was bombed. You know, if the, uh, the investigation processes does not necessarily now web such a uh, character as the corporate, it, it's not, it, it cannot say that the corporate until it's proven uh, uh, to be so. So I believe that is the procedure that must, that, 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 uh, that must, not, that must play out, that is playing out. And even in this case, it's not be any different. So in most cases, when um, things happen in Nigeria, they're being swept under the carpet. And just like what Yamgu said, the other person um, who was accused of bombing a certain area, um, we don't even know if that's the person. Do you think this is going to be another case of, oh, yes, this is what has happened now, and then we sweep it under the carpet? The people who are perpetuating such, um, such evil or such criminality do not really face the justice system. Is that going to happen here as well? Because we've seen trends where things like like this happen and no one says anything again after a while well you know that's the usual nigeria uh, nigerian problem and that is one of our the root cause of our instability and our root cause of underdevelopment because corporate political corporate and corporate of crimes are usually not apprehended and it's a problem if you look even in all sectors not just a, a, not just this one so it not be it not be strange that this is also another and another jamboree you know, where, where the actual conflict will not be brought to book. Uh, it, it, it is so unfair. That is why uh, we are saying we are crying out loud for reforms in our security architecture, particularly in the policing of, of state. state. Policing of state should be, a state policing should come to play. You know, because, because the, the, the correct strength you know, of sweeping issues on that carpet is unfair, it's uncalled for. It does not, you know, speak well of our of our constitution. That's why we are saying that, you know, certain areas of the constitution must be reviewed, you know, to accommodate some of these excesses. You know, because this is not the first time things have been swept under the carpet. Even they will tell you that uh, we have apprehended a vessel of food of over 220, uh, yeah. 50 million cubic and all of that. After some uh, period of time, it will be swept under the carpet. And so it's not be it's not be strange that this also is another will be an Another a jamboree of making noises and you know signing checks and and the corporates are not brought to book. My advice to, to security agencies is that they must up their game. My advice to every state government within the Niger Delta and beyond is that security they are the chief security officers of, of their states. So the peace this, this peaceful disposition of their states is their responsibility. So I call Subara to set up panel of inquiry, independent panel of inquiry because of course the university has retired military generals and retired officer so they should come up with a with, with a very serious uh, um, inquiry uh, you know to to, to peep into this issue and come up with a, a, a very positive solution and perhaps bringing out the fishing out the conflict very very important if it's politically motivated 
If they are not the people that are doing the bad stuff, they are not the people that are, are doing the bad stuff with the they are not the bad eggs. So they should fish them out, and, 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 and that would be, you know, a, a step in the right direction. So this is a little step also for uh, Governor Kubara, you know, to put his thinking cap on and 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 ensure that this is not other uh, other. Uh, 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 issues that are swept under the carpet after a period of time, that the culprits of such heinous crime of burning a secretariat, you know, should be brought to book. That's my uh, uh, humble, uh, you know, suggestion and, and, and advice. Okay. But do you do you see do you see the people who who make uh, what I would call careless pronouncements as uh, people who should face the wrath of the law as well, or we ju should just take it as that is politicking and forget it. Because sometimes these you things poke the, ham the ambers of uh, violence and other uh, things that we do not even want to see in our society, but they go scot-free. So while we are looking for the criminals, shouldn't we also be looking for the people who make statements, unguarded statements? I think, I think, I think uh, the freedom of uh, speech, there are clauses of freedom of expression. And if somebody is making, you know, suggestive, uh, uh, you know, a statement that can that, that can instigate violence in a, in a society, such person should be put behind bars. Such person should be should be should be arrested and for making careless statements, you know, that can cause chaos. Uh, 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 for saying that this is a political motivation, that is very huge to say. So anybody that is making such statement should be questioned, should be called for questioning, because those kind of uh, those uh, those kind of statements cannot bring a solution. Rather, it can only you know bring in uh, instigate and inspire bad blood and, and cause mayhem in in society. So my my my, my thinking is that if there is an Act the, the the information access freedom of expression and should be amended in such a way that if anybody is making false claim, such person, particularly statement of such uh, quality that can cause disaffection in the society, those kind of set of persons should be put behind but should be arrested, you know, for a period of time for questioning to say why is they made that kind of statement. Because for such kind of statement to come to the public clear, that means there must be some level of information that you have. Mm. Give us the information that you have, you know, to, for you to say this is political but Give us a certain information so that we can know, uh, 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 you know, we can take it from there. You know, in, in the Western climate, such statements does not go uh, on, on, under the carpet. You know, they have scrutinized critically to ascertain the originality of such a uh, statement. But sometimes, sometimes some of those statements are made, you know, out of concern that, okay, if the political house that was born, and uh, therefore, you know, looking at it critically, it could be political motivated. So people must be guided in what they are saying. If they are saying it's allegedly political, uh, motivated, then something alleged is there. So, uh, so the language and uh, the language structure must be must be very cons must be considered very very well because anybody that is speaking on behalf of the system is assumed that such a person is a is a, is a communication expert, is somebody that can express very well, that understand the rudiments of communication. So, if there are flaws in such kind of communication, those kind of things should be probably uh, should be questioned, questioning, you know, so that those kind of careless statements will not be will not be uh, be, be flying around in our in our space. In, in, in our politics. All right, so IPAC um, has urged President Bala Tinubu to, um, you know, ensure that violence, pro um, things like this, um, uh, terrorism, to take a decisive and directive action against it. How do you think that the president, because he's the leader of our nation, how do you think that the president, even with the governors, can ensure that they're taking decisive actions when it comes to violence and terrorism in Nigeria? See, you know that terrorism has been an it has been a consistent issue in our polity for the last decade. Yeah. You know, so therefore, it is very imperative that the architecture, the security architecture, must not be must not be uh, solely the responsibility of the federal government. That is the reason why we are saying that the Nigerian state is overdue to operate to, to go revert back to the regional system. Because the regional government, you know that you know the the person that you are calling out for is close, very close to the people. You know, that's why I say true federalism is the at all of this because there is there are flaws. Nigeria is too big a nation, you know, for one man, you know, for one system to accommodate every, everything. That's why we are, we are being agitating and calling for true federalism so that some of these excesses can be can be can be can, can be the gap can be breached very very closely. But of course, we call to the uh, to the uh, you know uh, to the federal government. You know, if you look at, if you look at that call, you will see some element of politics playing on that tone, uh, you know. 
as a result of saying, you know, the, the state is insecure, call for a state of emergency. Uh, that is the, that is the uh, body language of such statements. But he cannot provide permanent solution to these uh, concurrent uh, issues that are happening around, you know, uh, states in, in Nigeria. That's why I say state policing to federalism must come to play. And the issue of uh, uh, state policing must be put to, put to action. You know, so that because these are the things that can make Nigeria great again, and not necessarily that uh, mono system of, of security of, of security architecture does not it cannot solve our problem currently. So the states must take responsibility, and the local government uh, and chairman as well must also play a very critical role to ensure you know because security is everybody's business. So everybody must be brought uh, bring you know to play uh, to that. So calling on the president on this in particular issue is my politics for me that is not the solution that is just you know that is, that is just dancing around it's a fallacious move uh, rather than uh, providing the permanent solution you know for security in our in our client oh, well i don't know uh, what um let's let's just finalize by talking about what is happening in river state and how you think it's going to affect uh, uh politics in nigeria um, and democracy in general in nigeria uh, in River State, we have uh, two houses of assembly. I don't know who is paying the other one. If the governor recognizes only one and the other one is still thriving, I don't know who pays them and uh, whether they are still drawing salary from the government that doesn't recognize them. We have more or less two governors, one sitting in, in Port Harcourt and the other one uh, in proxy, maybe sitting from Abuja and, and trying to govern uh, River State and all that. But how do you see what is happening in River State, how it is going to affect democracy and politics in Nigeria generally? So uh, this question is very, very important because our judiciary, you know, must play that uh, further, that uh, role to ensure that, you know, the rule of law is upheld. Because, you know, the character, uh, River State being characterized by two state uh, as far as they say, this is an abnormal. And it has been there for about for, for months. It is not normal. It is not. It shouldn't be heard anywhere. It should not be seen anywhere. That's this kind of thing is a threat to our collective democracy. Because this thing can, if, if it's not nipped to the, in, in the board, it can happen in any state. I bet you if, if this matter lingered for a period of one year, as it were, you could see the replica of this situation in our next, in our next election. You could see that some person would just say, okay, after all, in my mind, we'll go to court, we we'll court decide, we'll go to appeal, we'll now go to Supreme Court. That the judiciary must be very decisive on this matter. What we expect that, you know, on the, on the advent of this issue, the, the Supreme Court should, should uh, with, in, with speed, take over this uh, issue and be very decisive with, 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 with their ruling so that this illegality uh, will not linger for long. This is, this is an illegal, it's illegality, it's abnormal. So somebody cannot, that is not a, the governor of a state, cannot sit down somewhere else and decide the fate of, 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 an, of, the fate of an entire state. It's abnormal. So we call on the judiciary, the RNC, we, uh, we call on the judiciary to uh, make this on the board. Because of course, the uh, one the side that are collecting salary from the government is is it will be the will be the uh, will, will be the jumbo uh, faction that is collecting salary, and the other one is just an abnormal. Because it's very clear that those percent of persons have moved to another party, and the constitution is very sound and clear on this. So the judiciary should stop playing politics, and you know, be, be part, stop being part of the politics of, of the system. And because they are, they are the the, the, the hope of the common man. So we should give the common man the benefit. We vote for the, for those percent of persons. And we are saying that those persons have, have, have violated the the, the, the the provision of the constitution. Therefore, uh, justice should take its course. And then we should stop petting the, uh, the justice system. So this, this is a very a serious threat, you know, to our, our, our national democracy, to our practicing democracy. is a threat, and the judiciary and, and every other stakeholder of government must must come, you know, decisively, you know, to decide on the on the fate of this matter. That one person will not be deciding the fate of a river state because of structure and all of that. It's an abnormal, it's an aberration, and it's an insult to uh, to to, uh, to the practicing democracy okay. of Nigeria. Because this thing, if it's not well and my brother, the kind of problem that is that will be proved allegedly, it will be beyond what one was. It is a more in the in the I, I yeah, agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you, very far. I agree with you, very far. They they the judiciary has a lot on their 
table and they should sit up because a lot of things will go um, very, very unfortunately, as it were, if they don't sit up and be decisive in their decisions. When they take and a decision, independent. and yes, they're, they're in, they should be independent enough mm. to make these decisions and stick by them, so that people will know that once the, decision, uh, the judiciary makes a pronouncement, it is the final pronouncement. But this yeah. is how far we can go, Bedford. Thank you so much for your thoughts this morning. Thank you, Bedford. We've been talking to Bedford Berefa, public affairs analyst, and we were talking about the River State, the political situation in River State, where the APP is accusing political actors of being responsible of bombing their secretariat, and whether or true that is, uh, whether or not that is true, the coming days will prove. And this is how we have to wrap up on the show, and we are very thankful that you were able to join us today. Until we meet again tomorrow, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rome Paulson. Have an amazing day.